In this review, we're going to review the Soundstream model. It's a Tarantula T4.900N. This is a digital four channel amplifier, which is also bridgeable down to two channels. This amplifier packs a punch. Lots of features in this little guy. I like this little amp. It reminds me of a, a Memphis M Class, like the MCA 2004, just with a lot more balls. I tell you, this thing is small. It's amazing what digital power can do these days. So, as far as the, uh, the size, because that's a big consideration, I'm sure, for anybody who's looking to get one of these. This amplifier measures in at about 9 and 15 16 so we'll just call it 10 inches on the length. Um, with this little strip, which you see there on the side, kind of reminiscent of the old Infinity amplifiers, you're going to want to add yourself about 3 quarters of an inch just to play it safe for the, uh, for the, for the barrier strip with the wires. As far as your height goes, 1 and 3 quarters will do you. And as far as your depth... I'm going to measure the chassis not with the, uh, the black logo right there. And that's going to give you six and a half inches. So, very, very small amplifier. Very small. And heavy. There's actually some stuff in this amplifier. I have yet to open one of these up, but it's been a little while since I've opened up an amplifier. But then again, Soundstream doesn't give you a reason because, unfortunately, only cheap, crappy amplifiers that need to be repaired very frequently need to be opened very frequently. Now... Something that is negative, and I've heard it's been said on the uh, internet on reviews, that there's two little screws here. Unfortunately, those kind of inhibit the amplifier from sitting perfectly straight. So personally, if you're going to put this on something that was carpeted, it would never be any kind of thing that would bother you. But for me, you know, it's my job to be fanatical and be crazy. And you can see it. I mean, it's ever so slight. I mean, maybe I'm just being a little neurotic about this thing. But I have to find something bad. I can't say everything that's good about it. Otherwise, what the heck you'd be watching me for? You could just go read a book. Look at that. It's a nice little amp. I like it. This is where we have to spend some time right there on the side. Look at this. Nice plastic machine. Grommeted. Machine threaded screws. Somebody loved this amplifier. This looks nice. You know when you look at something you say, hey, that's nice? This is nice. I like this. I'm going to reset up this camera and I'm going to talk to you about some of the features that are in this amplifier that I think are just really cool. Now we're going to get in a little bit more in depth on this amplifier, but really quick, I mean, I don't know um, if you watch me, if you've watched me in, in the past and see my other reviews, if you're one of those people that are my fan and you kind of like the way I, I put my reviews, you know, and, and just, you know, down to earth true, you know, I'm not biased, I can care less if you buy it or not, it doesn't really make a difference to me. But it does matter that you respect what I say and believe it and take it to be the truth. So when I do my reviews, I take great pride and I try to explain things that I like, things that I don't like. So just for instance, if you look at the side of this amplifier and you see that there's a 40 amp fuse and you see a 35 amp fuse. Number one, that's very odd because in most amplifiers, if I were to open the box or if I were to buy an amp from someone and open up the box and see two separate um, amperage fuses, it would make me think that somebody already used it. Um, the thing had two 35s and two 40s in there, just replaced with whatever other color he had lying around. It was close enough and slapped it in there. This amplifier actually comes this way, uh, believe it or not, and it says it right there 40 amp plus 35 amps. Now, if you know me and you know also voltage law or Ohm's law, you also know that 40 plus 35 is 75. So you got 75 amps, multiply that times 12 volts, you get you're going to get the equ equivalent of the outputs of the wattage output. So watts times amps equals, I'm sorry, amps times volts equals watts. Duh. So this is going to tell you right there what you're getting. Am I getting 900 watts? The answer is yes. And right here, this here is, you know, it's another telltale sign. You see that you got 8 gauge inputs on power and ground, and you have your regular remote lead. These, I think, maybe could do with a little bit of a higher... Um, size wire, but I'm guessing because this amplifier is very digital, D-class amplifiers don't really require such higher gauge wires because they're not <clears throat> as wasteful and they're not such heat generators as a typical older MOSFET amplifier with tons of just stuff that just creates massive amounts of heat and you can turn on light bulbs with the heat that they generate. D-class are typically a lot more the opposite and that's what I think this is all about. I'm going to have to just say, okay, I'm going to go with the Soundstream engineers in this one because I don't know any better. And if I don't know, I just tell you like it is, I don't know. Now, lastly, I want to just go over some of these here fu functions and, and just 
um, amazing amount of features. It's so, so robust on the side of this amplifier. It's, it's actually pretty stunning to me. You got over here one side for your left and right audio, other over uh, left and right audio here for your left and right separation. Now, of course, this thing is internally bridgeable, so that way you can create the power and sum it from two from four channels that it has power ICs for, combine it down into a two ohm system. Now, if you go uh, at 4 ohms, you would have 150 watts of real power at 4 ohms, which is the typical speaker's impedance rating. You would have 225 by 4 at 2 ohms, and if you go by 2 channels bridge, you'd have 450, 450 watts RMS times 2, and again, at 4 ohms. This unit is not rated at a 2 ohm load for bridged. So I'm not sure if that is okay, if it's cool, if it's not cool. I'm not sure. Check with the manufacturer on that one. So this amplifier is all Class D full range SMT circuitry, which is awesome. Double sided composite epo epoxy uh, PCB. You got a 2 ohm stereo, 4 ohm bridged, multi channel unit, 1 ohm stable, Class D mono block. So actually maybe it is 1 ohm stable. Look at that. And I, I, can't, I, I don't know how I missed that the last time. Now the three way protection circuitry, which I'm going to get into. This unit has a delayed on off circuit so that eliminate turn on and turn off pops, which could be really super annoying. You got tri mode capability, so that means that this amplifier can do two, four, or five channel respectively. If it is a four or five channel amplifier, this one is only a four, so it's only two, dual mode capable. You have a, tw a 12 decibel high, low, and subsonic crossover. Plus, it has a bandpass crossover, which is insane, and that's something I definitely want to go into. You have the input source selector for channels 4 and 3, and you have a bass boost built right into it, dash-mounted remote gain control, and that only applies to the 5 and the 1 channel. So if you had the 1200D, um, or if you had the 5-channel version, that would come with a remote bass control. This unit, not so much, and not, nor does it even need it, so who cares. Um, and it does take the 8-gauge, as I mentioned, that goes into it. Um, I mean, so that's very efficient. You don't have to go out and buy yourself some overpriced, four, you know, four gauge, two gauge amp kit or whatever. Now over here, you have your front, you have your level, your high pass filter, and low pass filter. So what this does is, if you switch this to BPF and you got a band pass filter, you could actually have um, a crossover and eliminate some of the low frequencies, like 80 hertz. Bring it up and let it go 80 hertz and let it play up to like around 400 hertz. Put a bandpass filter, get rid of the, the lower mid range, bring it into the upper mid range and let it run full range from there all the way up to the high frequency. So you can actually tune out intermediate frequencies on the front and the rear channels respectively right in this amplifier and also do it digitally. That's really cool. Plus it's also got a frequency multiplier times 1 and a times 10. So again, like I was saying, this very is very much reminiscent of the old Memphis amplifiers to me. That's my, from what I see and from my experience I remember, and I've always had extremely, extremely uh, good experiences with Memphis amplifiers. This amplifier is really nice. I tell you, it looks good. It keeps cool. I love the flexibility on this amplifier. I love the size. I love everything about it. I think it's great. For the price point, really not too bad. Great looking piece. So if you're looking for a good 4-channel amplifier, check this bad boy out. This thing is pretty hot.